Welcome back to Catalan Soccer guys, I'm Catalan Ben and we're back today with the perfect pre-match warm-up. So I see a lot of coaches out there and fellow coaches who are asking, what should I do before a game? My kids start the game slowly, how do I get them up to speed quickly? How do I warm them up in a really relevant way, an appropriate way, but that gets them playing quickly? So here it is, here's a really good drill for you that's really simple, it's very easy to set up, it's quite easy to follow and understand so it doesn't take too long and you can use this week in, week out to get the kids up to speed before the kickoff. Okay, so this drill is a really simple area to set up. All you need is two large rectangles. I usually go with about 10 yards deep and about 20 yards wide. It gives us lots of room to play, but you can vary that depending on the number of plays that you're gonna have involved in the warm-up. So for coaches with six or seven plays, you might make it smaller. If you've got a big squad of 12 to 14 plays, you might need it a little bigger. Manage it, but make sure it's two large rectangles. The second thing, I use either slalom poles or you can use large superdome volcano style cones or you can just use small cones if you need to, but a big, nice, obvious obstacle in the middle of the pitch that the ball needs to go through. Now, the objective of the game is very similar to a rondo. So, say for instance, here we have the yellow team who are keeping the ball for a certain number of passes away from a red player. When they complete that certain number of passes, their job is then to pass the ball through the poles or through the cones in the middle over to the opposite side. As soon as that ball transfers over to the opposite side, the red team then become the possession team and a yellow player has to go in there and chase the ball down and try and press. It gets kids moving the ball very quickly. It gets pressing players with some urgency trying to win the ball back and it makes sure the ball's moving at high speed, keeping lots of players involved. If the defensive player manages to win the ball, they have to play the ball back into their own half. So the yellow player here wins the ball back, plays it back into the yellow half, and then goes back to join his team. At that point, a red player, ideally not the same player who pressed the first time, goes into the opposing half to then try and press the ball too. It gets kids moving the ball quickly. You can put a real emphasis on the depth and the width that they are playing with in that framework to make sure that the ball's moving correctly and make sure that the players are spaced out well. And it puts a real onus on the passing and the quality of the pass that goes into your teammate or through the poles in the middle. And then we build from there. So there's a lot of different ways that you can change the game and make it slightly harder or increase the intensity of the game. The first way is to increase the number of passes required before the ball goes through the poles. I usually start with something simple like three. Kids should get plenty of success and start to enjoy the game because they'll score quite a lot of points that way. Then we go to five or it might be seven, it might be ten. We can gradually increase that number, making things difficult. But as you increase the number of passes, it can become a little bit slow if the pressing player just can't get near the ball and they're keeping it away from him for a long period of time. So at that point, we also increase the number of pressing players. So as the ball transfers over to the opposite half, we might say now that two players can go into press rather than one. That increases the intensity of the press. It means the ball has to move more quickly and it means there's a bit more pressure on the players that have got the ball to play quickly and think quickly. For older, more advanced players, there's a couple of other variations that you can do. Sometimes I'll use a futsal in this practice, and because of the heavier ball, it takes a bit more punch, you've got to put a bit more power behind it, and it keeps the ball on the floor nicely to stop the ball bouncing around too high with any bad first touches. The other thing that you can do is reduce the number of touches that each player is allowed. So if you were to take the number of touches down to three as a maximum or even two touch, then that puts an onus on the kids to move the ball fast. They don't get much time to think and they have to plan their next move before that ball arrives. And like with any Rondo style practice, you can put things like bounce passes, one touch passes, clever flicks into the game to keep the game fun and exciting. If you make this game slightly competitive where you're asking teams to outscore the opponent, then it's a great way to go with it. And you'll always get a bit of drama and a bit of fun when someone completes their seven passes or 10 passes, whatever the challenge is, goes to play through the poles and they miss. Not only have they just given the ball away, but they've also given away an opportunity to score a point, and now they need to run and go get the ball back too. So you'll have a great time with it. I promise you the kids will enjoy it. It'll be lots of fun. There's good intensity. There's lots of passing and sharing of the ball, and it's a great way to warm the kids up and get them into match mode. I hope this drill works for you guys. I'd love to hear some feedback, and I'd love to hear that you guys are using it before your match and getting off to a fast start in your games, which is exactly what most coaches want. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already.
See you soon.